Well, hello there, my friends. Welcome to another brand new episode of Dunswell Zoo and another brand new speed build. We are building for the white eared Titi monkey, also known as the Bolivian grey Titi monkey, uh, within the Capybara Springs habitat. So it's a habitat within a habitat, double habitat. <laughs> um, so I started off with a shell for this one. I wanted to make sure I got the shape right, and even then, I still ended up changing it. So. <laughs> um, Put a plaster floor in and then I've gone ahead and put this mesh in. I wanted an indoor and outdoor enclosed area uh, for the TT monkeys as well as access to the TT island. Unfortunately because of the way that Planet Zoo worked you can't actually have a habitat within a habitat so it's just sort of implied. So the TT monkeys can go wherever they want technically which is something I didn't want but mm, oh well. <laughs> we'll deal with it. <laughs> um, so yeah, they are least concerned, the white-eared titi monkeys, and unlike the uh, white-faced saki monkeys that we used to have, um, just quickly diverging, I tried doing an angled roof here, and I really wanted an angled roof. It doesn't work. I just ended up doing a flat roof. Uh, but it looks alright in the end, actually, so I'm, I'm pleased with it. Uh, back to the titi monkeys, though. Um, they are least concern. They are smaller than the uh, Saki monkeys and uh, found on the fringes of the Pantanal region. Uh, these tend to be vagrants or they've been pushed there due to habitat loss, but they can be found within the Pantanal. So it's <laughs> an improvement on the, the Saki monkeys that we used to have. Um, they're actually quite vocal. Uh, TT monkeys. I have never seen them in person, unfortunately, and from what I can gather, there isn't any in the UK, or if there is, they didn't come up in my research. <laughs> um, so that might explain why I've never seen them. Um, but they are uh, in decline, despite them being least concern, and this is due to habitat loss and habitat degradation, and the the species solely responsible for that is humans. We are destroying their habitat and degrading their habitat. Um, but they do have adaptability and they are found over quite a wide range. So they're quite vocal. They live in small family groups. They are uh, dineural. Have I said that right? Dineural? Di diurnal. They're awake during the day. <laughs> we'll go with that one. <laughs> um, bachelor groups have been recorded in the wild, so that's something to possibly explore. But we do have a mixed male-female group in Dunswell Zoo, uh, but they are non-breeding, of course, because they are a least concerned species. Um, and the young will disperse from the group. Females tend to leave early than males. Um, TT monkeys are primarily arboreal, which, as we all know by now, is something that um, doesn't really exist in Planet Zoo. Um, even, like, the koalas, they still come to the ground, which does happen in the wild, don't get me wrong, but primarily they're arboreal and it just doesn't happen in Planet Zoo. <laughs> uh, same goes for the, the TT monkeys. Um, they walk on all fours, and they are primarily herbivorous. They eat like fruits and leaves, and uh, occasionally they will eat like small insects. But that's generally a a rarer occurrence. They are more abundant in areas of uh, food, so where there's fruiting uh, plants, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the the uh, white-eared TT monkey. Um, so the habitat then, I wanted it to have this sort of lost temple-y theme, but I wanted it to, it to be very custom with all the climbing enrichment and what it looks like, and I hope I've achieved that. Um, so 
that are most of the climbing enrichment in the indoor area is uh, completely custom built the outdoor area is some of the in-game blueprints but in a, a way that <laughs> it's uh, modified that's the word I'm looking for um, so I'm just connecting the house up to the island at this point um, raising it up because obviously we don't want it so close to the water just in case um, going ahead and using the thin beams this time which isn't something I've used very often actually uh, but because they're such a small species of primate I just felt it was a bit more appropriate to use the uh, smaller logs obviously ideally they would have access to the island and the indoor and outdoor part of their habitat but Planet Zoo just doesn't work in that way unfortunately so they can go wherever they want um, so just connecting up their food um, platform, feeding platform there. Uh, we do change the colour scheme, don't worry, it's not staying red. I go for a sort of pale grey colour, um, putting the uh, supports in. I was going to do it boxed and then I was going to do nice big chunky logs and in the end I just decided to go for the climbable tree trunks. Yeah, so it's still chunky but it's less obvious than some of the other pieces um, and then I do the smaller ones on the inside like so and then got to make sure the keepers can access the feeding platforms which of course defeats the whole point of it being a feeding platform because you've got to keep it where the keepers can access it and I'm just checking what everything looks like there with the habitat and I don't know why it stopped. <laughs> there we go, we move on. Changing the education boards. Uh, the education boards are wrong, it says near threatened. Then we move on to the uh, inside of the uh, Tiki Monkey enclosure. Just putting some supports in for these platforms. I've put some uh, mulch down. It's not mulch, I think it's wood chip uh, from the Frontier Pack which is available on the Nexus. I've used it a couple of times in a few of my builds. Uh, changing the colour scheme now. Going for this nice grey colour and then a lighter grey for the surrounds. And there's the outdoor area all planted. And then I do actually put some plants on the inside area just because it looked very barren without it and you know, th there is skylights, so there would be light entering this area, so plants could feasibly grow. So it's not completely unrealistic in that regard. Going ahead here and making some of the custom enrichment. This being the climbing enrichment, of course. And something I wanted to play about with in this build with ropes, because I've not really used ropes in my builds before so this I wanted to use ropes uh, this was a nightmare to get into place I just ended up using the, the panels in the end because it just kept clipping through the wall <laughs> but yeah ropes here we go so I wanted to use ropes more because I tended to stick to logs and things like that so we use sort of curved ropes and straight ropes just to give a variety of different a viewing angles and B uh, textures and C climbing uh, structures for the the TT monkeys. So there's lots of ropes and lots of pieces of bamboo for them to climb on as well. And they do use it. I've, I've seen them use it and you'll hopefully see it in the the tour and the cinematics which will be coming shortly I'd imagine yeah not much longer left now about five minutes um, so I'm just putting some pieces of temple in because obviously I wanted it to look a bit like a lost temple and now just putting in the plants 
So the TT monkeys do also accept North American plants as well. Um, so we make use of that and we put some different planting in here because of course the capybara and the gooties can't get in here. Um, so we were able to use some planting that's different to the outside. Now I was putting a tree in there but I wouldn't be able to fit it in with a roof. Uh, putting some of these Virginia creeper plants on the wall I think it was. Uh, putting some bedding in there of course because this is their sleeping area. And just some stones in there. Tried to change the colour, realised it doesn't quite look how I wanted it to look and ended up putting it back as its original colour. <laughs> so we go for a flat roof. And then I put the skylight in the middle, but I use opaque uh, glass. Just so I don't want too much light shining through. And then we put a trim around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside. Can't change the colour, so it's got to stay white, unfortunately. And then I wanted a really sort of detailed, rocky border here. And this is putting the groundwork down for it. And then it was too tedious, so <laughs> I did the rest of it off camera. And I'm now doing some uh, added details for the little keeper area. Um, so we've got a brush, a rake and a shovel. A lot of things you would need for wood chip and cleaning up monkey poo and stuff like that. And this was a nightmare. I wanted to create some clips that you could hang the uh, the tools on. So I ended up using the feet from the painted pots. Um, but they disappeared into the wall at one point. There we go. I have uh, spent far too long on that <laughs> detailed rock border. Um, just sort of planting it up. And I just wanted to create a little bit of a, a divide really from the main path and the indoor viewing for the TT monkeys which hopefully I've managed to achieve here and then put some education in change it for the TT monkeys move the capybara education along and then I try to connect these two pieces up with rope it doesn't have it it just would not have it. We don't have any rope pieces that are short enough or carved enough. So I ended up using a thin piece of log here. Yeah. And just sort of sliding that into place. <laughs> uh, same for that, connecting that up to there. And then I had to put... So I do have to change this. They can't use this for some reason. Uh, so I have to change it to a platform rather than a piece of log. And just checking everything's all right. And then here, adding an access door for the outside for realism purposes. And uh, it, it, it goes all right. I can't really say anything other than that. Um, Frank's over there. He'll help us out with some scaling. So I just sort of eyeball it to start with. And then it gets stuck in the... Uh, the uh, mess, mesh piece. So... I end up moving the mesh pieces back while I get this door figured out because I needed to change the colours and everything. Um, so I go ahead and move those mesh pieces back. Change the colours and then just move the mesh pieces back in again. Realise that wasn't quite aligned. Tweak it a bit, change the colour. Um, put a handle on the door, of course. And same on the other side. And some hinges, just keeping the uh, details and the realism. And then I was just going to leave it as mud, and I thought, you know what, we can fit a staff path in there. <laughs> um, and then this bit just put in the education in. And then seeing their traversable area, realizing that they can't actually use uh, the outdoor area for some reason. So I changed the logs out for a platform, and then they can use it. put the supports in of course then I've got to connect it all back up so I think that's about it my friends I will see you in the live section very shortly and after that the cinematics so see you soon so here we are in the live section and I hope you all enjoyed the cinematics 
cinematics, not the cinematics, the speed build, we're off to a good start, <laughs> and this always happens. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the uh, speed build. I'm going to go take a very quick walk through the Capybara Springs, and you can see the new structure over there at the back, but we will probably see the uh, white-eared TT monkeys, also known as the Bolivian uh, grey TT monkeys, rounding about the habitat. It's been a while since we've been in here actually, to be fair. So we can see the Agoutis and the Capybaras here. We'll go over the bridge. Anything over at this side? No, nothing really uses this side to be fair. Might need to move some of the uh, enrichment over here. But you can see we've got a good view here of the uh, white-eared TT monkeys, which are all over there actually. Um, they've got new climbing enrichment to get into. Oops, I forgot something. I forgot to put the, the legs on that. I'll do that shortly. Uh, they have the new climbing enrichment to access the TT Island. It was the Saki Island. So we'll just come past the Capybara here. And guests aren't allowed off the path. But why not guests? So that doesn't apply to us. You see, they're quite small. Um, so we have got a fair few of them and they're non-breeding so we don't need to worry about that Whee! <laughs> um, yeah I think they're really cool I've been watching them for a while and they just sort of leap you can see one on the inside there as well it's pretty cool anyway we will continue with our impromptu tour Got the capybara and the Azara Zaguti. And then got this forage box, primarily for the uh, TT monkeys. And then en uh, education, sorry, not enrichment, education. This is their sort of shut off outdoor area where they can go if they're not allowed access to the main habitat for whatever reason. Might be high winds, might be disease stuff like that so and there's Frank helping us with the uh, access door to the outdoor area which we will check out in just a, a second but we've got this sort of planted border to separate the, the two areas we're gonna come around here and ignore the Z fighting on the door <laughs> um, see if we can see any yep there they are well, I saw one. I don't know where it's gone. It was at the back. There we go. We they love it in here. They're just so energetic. Just bounce around, run up the ropes, maybe not jump through the roof. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, most of it's custom, of course. What you see, uh, custom climbing rigs, stuff like that. And of course we have education here but from here you can see them going out onto TT Island just like that <laughs> you can see them going to their outdoor area just like that and again they're just jumping everywhere or you can see them indoors in here so we will head into their little outdoor enrichment area So it might not look like much, but it's more than enough. So they've got all the different climbing platforms, they've got lots of foliage, what they can rake around in and hide in and play in. Got enrichment out here as well. They can access this enrichment, as we can see here. This one is playing with the, oops, this one is playing with the mirror mobile. He 
<laughs> and off it goes. Nyom. <laughs> So yeah, they're really happy with how it's turned out, and they are a least concerned species. This is the indoor area, of course you saw this in the speed build I reckon. Uh, I've got some details in here, There's some sort of like keeper tools, I think you saw this in the speed build as well. Uh, got planting, there's their water back there, got lots of rope and bamboo to climb on lots of areas for them to rest and sleep and there's some plants in here just to make it look a bit more lively and lived in also gives them a little bit of enrichment as well now I've yet to see them on the island itself they tend to stick <laughs> to this area but that's absolutely fine I don't mind too much So yeah, they are a least concerned species. Uh, it does say, actually, if I just... Oh, well, look at that. There's one right on the path here. Because you know how weird that would be, just looking at the Bolivian white-eared TT monkeys. And then you just turn around, and there's, there's one there. It's <laughs> just weird. Um... I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, bugger. Indoor planting. Oh yeah, um, it does say they're uh, near threatened on the education board. So if we go onto the Zoopedia. And we go on to Bolivian Grey. It's least concern. And I've checked the wiki. And I will just double check again now. Um, Wiki has it listed by the IUCN as a least concern as well. Yes, least concern. Um, so we're not going to be breeding them, but we can always add to their numbers. There's a tolerance of... 13 males and 39 females. Uh, so we can add some more if need be, but I don't think it will be necessary. Either way, that's going to do it for uh, this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Again, apologies, it's a little bit of a shorter episode, just very busy in real life at the moment. Uh, so yeah, just... I hope you enjoyed. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It really helps me out, helps channel grow. Uh, both really good things. And until then, my friends, stay safe, stay kind, and I shall see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>